You ever see something and then go, hey, I, I think I might know how that's done. Uh, I think I might be able to recreate this. Well, that's what I did here. Uh, so this is the bouncing DVD logo screensaver. Um, I saw it and I was like, you know, okay, let me take like 10 minutes and see if I can't recreate this in Touch Designer because I think I understand, you know, just the, the basic concept at play here. Um, and I want to go through it with you because this is something that's, you know, it's not, if you go through this tutorial, you're not going to want to go share this on Instagram and go like, look at my generative art. Uh, <laughs> but this is something that, you know, I think, I think learning, um, pieces of software by recreating things that you're familiar with is ju it's just a fantastic way to learn. Um, and especially this project here, because I think this is something that a ton of people are familiar with and, uh, the core concepts at play here are, are fairly basic. They're um, you know fundamental to Touch Designer, and they're super useful in a million different ways. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, why don't we go ahead and make this uh, quick, dumb little project? Make our bouncing DVD logo, and then uh, you know you can sit and wait for it to uh, hit the corner for the rest of your life. All right, so I'm gonna back out here and start up a new project, or um, in my case, I'm just gonna drop down an empty container. I'm going to call this container DVD underscore logo. Let's go inside. All right. I'm going to go through all this fairly quickly and uh, I'm not going to do exact math everywhere. This is a, a loose, quick project. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is drop down a constant here. We're going to make three channels. I'm going to say res X, res Y and speed. So I am going to keep the resolution of this project at the max for the free version of Touch Designer. Um, so for Res X, we're going to say 1280. Res Y is 720. And speed, we're going to say 0 0.1. And that'll be explained in a little bit. So next, we're going to send our constant to a null. And let's call that null uh, params. You can call it whatever you want. All right, so now we just need to grab our DVD logo. So I just searched DuckDuckGo for a DVD logo. Let's grab, this one has a trademark thing on it. So let's grab this one. So what you wanna do is you really wanna save these files. Uh, anytime you're working with images or you know whatever, you wanna save it to an assets folder with your project file. But uh, for this case, I'm just gonna drag and drop this right into Touch Designer and then lock it. So now this is within the project file and if I save, this project file, uh, this asset is actually within the network. Um, so doing this will actually increase the size of the project file by you know the size of any assets that are locked in here. And it can cause some quirks. You really don't want to do it, but uh, you know that's what I'm doing here just to, for this quick project. Cool. So there are a number of different ways to uh, turn this white, which is what I want to do. Uh, so I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say, go into a transform change background color here to white, alpha to one, and comp over background color. Then send this into a threshold. Let's change comparator to greater. All right, cool. Next, I want to, this part isn't totally necessary, but I want to do it. I'm just going to crop the top and the bottom. So we're hitting the uh, top edge and the bottom edge with our crop top. <laughs> crop top, change the crop top parameter on our crop top, crop top node. All right, let's change crop bottom as well. And again, I'm not being exact here, not being pixel perfect, not gonna be doing a ton of math and expressions, just gonna eyeball a lot of this stuff. Cool. So now we have our logo here. And next we want to drop down a constant top. Just gonna make the alpha zero. This is just our canvas, a blank canvas here. And I'm gonna make this active here just so I can easily drag our res y onto the resolution of our constant. Res x and res y to set the resolution of our constant here. So let's send our crop into a composite. We're gonna change the operation to over. Let's send our constant in here. Then under the transform tab on our composite, we're gonna change this to native resolution. And the logo is a little big. We're basically just saying, you know, drop this logo at whatever resolution it's at over top of our, um, our set resolution. 
So we want to scale this down and we can actually do that on the uh, comp top here. So under scale, let's just drag this down till it feels about right. 0.15, that feels all right, cool. So before I go any further, I just, I want to be able to have an easy way to view this. So I'm going to send this into a transform. I'm going to say comp over background color and leave it black, send it into a null and then turn the display flag on. Cool. So now we have our white DVD logo on a black background. So next we just need our logo to start moving around and we're going to do that with some LFOs. So if we open up our, our uh, operators, go to our chops, type in LFO. We can drop down two of those. If you hold uh, the control key while uh, clicking on any of these operators, you can keep dropping it down additional ones. So let's drop down two LFOs. Perfect. So LFO one under the channel tab, I'm gonna call this TX for transform on the X axis. And LFO two, I'm gonna call TY. Next, I'm gonna send each of these to a null. Let's make each of these active and under our comp one up here, I'm going to drag TX to translate X as a chop reference and same for TY. And oh my God, where'd it go? Well, it's moving, it's moving a little fast and it's moving totally outside of the bounds of our canvas. So let's do a couple things. Let's take our speed parameter up here and we select both of our LFOs, click on the LFO tab or main tab here. And for frequency, this is what I want to set with our speed parameter up here. So let's drag speed to frequency as a chop reference. And then we need to change the amplitude of both of these LFOs. So right now it's going, our logo is just going way outside of the bounds of our canvas. So let's change the amplitude to 0.5. So now it's moving, but it's not moving the way we want. It's moving in like a weird circle. That's because we're on a sine wave. So let's change both of these to triangle wave. Awesome. So now we can see our DVD logo is moving around and when it's hitting the corner, it's bouncing. There's still a number of tweaks that we need to do here though. So the first one is that it's going too far. It's going all the way until it hits the very center of this image. So we can change that by just adjusting the amplitude of our two LFOs here. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm just gonna watch as this uh, hits the corner of the X axis and dial down the amplitude and see when we're hitting the corner of the image. Cool, 0.38 looks pretty good. So let's do the same thing with Y. So we're just gonna dial down our amplitude till it looks about right. It looks like we're hitting the uh, top and the bottom of our logo. All right. So for TX, I have 0.38 and for TY, I have 0.41. Again, this is pretty loose. We just want it to look okay. It doesn't need to be totally perfect. All right. So now we have our DVD logo. It's bouncing around. But one thing that you'll notice is that it's bouncing the exact same path every time. And that's because both of these are at the exact same speed. And that just means that it ends up being um, equivalent to, um, you know, whatever our aspect ratio is. So it's moving uh, in kind of a skewed, um, if you imagine a, a rectangle uh, at 16 by nine, then skewed. So what we want is we want to have this bouncing on, a, on essentially a square turned uh, 45 degrees so that every time it hits one of those corners, you know, it, it bounces at the exact same angle every time rather than being equivalent to our aspect ratio. So we just need to offset the speed of uh, one of these. So we're gonna do that by doing some basic math. We're gonna say, instead of both of these being frequency 0 0.1, we're gonna say our TY frequency needs to be, so let's uh, cheat real quick here. I'm gonna drag res X to just anything as a chop reference and then just Control X and cut it, put it on the clipboard. So now I have the uh, um, the uh, resolution X on the clipboard. So here's the expression that we wanna use. We wanna say the speed for Y is speed times parenthetical and then paste for our resolution X divided by paste and then just replace that X with a Y. 
and then close the parenthetical. Hit enter. And now we're moving in a perfect 45 degree angle here. So the expression here is just essentially saying, you know, take the aspect ratio, which is 16 by nine and multiply that Y so we can offset it in a way that gives us a, a perfect diamond here. Awesome. So now it's bouncing around and it's not landing in the same place over and over again. So next thing is we need it to change color every time it bounces. And we're going to do that with some simple logic and some noise. So next let's send this comp into another comp. We're going to leave the mode as multiply. Then we're going to drop down a noise top. We're going to go to the common tab and set the resolution here with res X and res Y. <clears throat> and then we're going to go back to the uh, transform tab here and we're going to set the scale to zero. So we're just essentially zoomed way in. And now let's feed this noise into comp two. And now you'll see we're just changing the color. And if I were to change the seed of the noise here every time, oh, uh, it's on monochrome, turn off monochrome. So now we have colored noise. So now every time I change the seed here, we're getting a new color. Now there are a million different ways that you could approach this if you wanted more control over this color. Uh, if you wanted you know, more granular control over the RGB values, but for now, this is all that we need. Just a random color. All right, so how do we get it to change every time we hit a corner? So we need to take the data from TX and TY down here, and we just need to do some basic logic. So let's send each of these into a logic chop. So for this top one, for TX, we want to change the convert input to off when outside bounds. And then we just need to set our bounds. So basically we want to say, um, you know, essentially, you know, pulse this whenever we go outside of our bounds. And what are our bounds? Our bounds are based on our amplitude of this LFO. So this LFO, because the offset is at zero, it's going from negative 0.38, which is, you know, over here, all the way up to 0.38 which is over here. So we can take this amplitude parameter and just drag it to our logic. Let's say the lower bounds is a reference and the upper bound is a reference. But remember the lower bounds is negative. So we want to just multiply that by negative one. And we're still not, you know, we're never actually leaving those bounds. So to just force it with a little bit of math here, let's just say, um, rather than the full minimum and maximum of our LFO, uh, how about, you know, the bound is almost, you know, at the very bottom and the top. So let's just add 0 0.01 to the bottom and subtract 0 0.01 from the top. Then lastly, on this logic, we just need to change channel pre-op to invert. So now this is always off, but when it hits either the right side or the left side, then we get this pulse, it goes from zero to one. Fantastic. And then we just need to do the exact same thing for our TY value here. So let's change this to off when outside bounds. Channel pre-op is now invert. And then we just wanna take our LFO amplitude from TY, send that to the bounds as a reference, both the min and the max, and then adjust our minimum to be times negative one plus 0 0.01 and our maximum bound minus 0 0.01. Awesome, so now whenever we hit the top, the bottom, or the left, or the right side, then we get a pulse going from zero to one. So then we just want to combine this, and we're gonna do that with a math chop. So send both of these into a math chop. We're gonna say combine chops maximum. So now the maximum value from either of these two logic chops will always push through into this math, math chop as a single stream of data. Awesome, so now we can send that into a count and whenever this pulses up to one, we'll add one to our count here. And now we can use this to change our color. So let's send this into a null before we export it, make this viewer active and then drag this data onto our noise here and send it to the seed as a chop reference. So now this will count up by one and it'll change the seed every time that we hit a corner, which changes the color 
of our logo. And because we're just infinitely counting up in our noise, you know, this is, uh, it's going to always be something different. And uh, yeah, not a whole lot else to it. And then, you know, hey, uh, we have control over everything. So let's, you can play around and make it super fast. Maybe you want to add a little feedback loop, give it some trails. You want to play with the transform of the feedback. So it's like moving outward. You could like change this to repeat. And then you just have a million of them. The world's your oyster. The DVD is your oyster. Fantastic. Generative art. <clears throat> we could do something like texture 3D, time machine, ramp. And now, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you think about that? Wow, the remix. This is a DVD thing for the 21st century. This is a DVD screensaver for the NFT generation. Check out this bullshit. Wow, generative art. Wow, wow. This one you probably shouldn't try at home. Could. And value change. No. Off an audio file. Turn off loop. Audio device out. See, look at, look at. <laughs> See, look what, look, <laughs> look what we can do. So thanks for checking out this dumb little project. I hope you learned something, maybe a new technique or two. Any questions, just uh, let me know. And if there's anything out there that you'd be curious to uh, see a tutorial on how to recreate, leave it in the comments. Uh, I really love tackling little mini projects like this. And as I said at the beginning, I think recreating existing things is a really great way to learn. And I'd love to start doing more tutorials here and there. So uh, thanks again and take care everyone. Could have some sort of riddle, Wait for it. like something that you have to look for. Sort of a where's Waldo? <laughs> oh! <laughs>